Good morning, everyone. Thanks for taking the time to sit down with me today for coffee and the Word. That time each morning that we examine a piece of God's Word, and then we apply it to our lives so that we can become a little more like Jesus today than we were yesterday. So, grab that mug, and let's get started. We're going to return to Psalm 65 this morning in verses 5 through 8. The psalmist said, You answer us with awesome and righteous deeds, God our Savior, the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the furthest seas, who formed the mountains by your power, having armed yourself with strength, who stilled the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, and the turmoil of the nations. The whole earth is filled with awe at your wonders, where morning dawns, where evening fades, you call forth songs of joy. David is again speaking prophetically here about a time when all people will come in verse 2 and when all the turmoil of the nations, verse 7, all the war, the strife, the conflict, the oppression will be ended. God is the Savior and hope of even those who live at the farthest ends of the earth. God's salvation begins with Abraham's family who then became the nation of Israel, and now has burst all boundaries of nation, race, language, ethnic origin, or geographical location. We must prepare our hearts for the rich of diversity of heaven by showing love for all, and especially those of God's people on earth who are far from us socially, economically, racially, politically, or in any other way. Lord, I'm so absorbed in my own troubles at times. I don't see and praise you for what you're doing across the world. Help me to escape the defense mechanism of racial superiority so I can embrace, learn from, rejoice in my brothers and sisters across the boundaries of race, clash, and nationality. Amen. Be blessed and have a grace-filled day.